Uh, general relativity is considered, as I told you, as a classical gauge theory for gravity, and it passes many observational tests. So it's it's really good theory if you forget about the dark energy and forget about the, all the data after 1998 acceleration expansion. And also, it's possible to explain many things by that. So still, still there is only one theory which passes all the tests, and this is the general relativity. And that's, that's the theory proposed by Einstein. All the tests locally and generally just pass it by the general relativity. So it was an attempt in the past to make a quantum mechanics on the background, which this background have the gravity. So in my talk, <coughs> I will try to explain to you that how you can consider a quantum mechanics <coughs> on the background when the gravity is very strong. This theory is called, this theory actually will be something like quantum mechanics. So to consider the quantum dynamics of the particle over the curved background, you needed to have something like Schrodinger equations. These equations actually call it Stuckelberg Schrodinger equations. And this theory is called Stuckelberg Horwitz Pyron theory. And Horwitz is the person who, who is still alive and work in this theory 88 years. So, in the stuckelberg horwitz pyron theory, we consider, we, we, we are talking about the building a quantum mechanics near the region of the space-time when the gravity is too strong. So it means that we are talking about the quantum dynamics of the particle near the black holes or something like that. Any, I, I don't want to uh, stick on the, uh, on the title of black hole. Any place in the world, in the universe, when you have a gravity, <coughs> you can use this SHP theory, Stuckelberg Horvitz Pyron theory, to explain the quantum dynamics of the particle. So, so this is, and the important thing is that <coughs> when you make the quantum mechanics on the curved background, general relativity is a co general covariant theory. So it's already support the Lorentz, trans, the Lorentz invariant. So <coughs> if you build the quantum mechanics on that, it means that you build a, a, a covariant theory quantum mechanics, a covariant quantum mechanics. <coughs> so this is actually a mini work I did it. So I studied some analytical solutions for the for the, this theory. So, <coughs> so, as I told you, I'm looking for the an equation, like Schrodinger equations, for the particle on the back curve background. So, this is the Hamiltonian of the particle on the curve background. So, you have a potential here. So you know that already the time is one of the coordinates. So now the problem is that how you can consider the dynamics when time is one of your coordinates, yes? For example, you know in classical mechanics you study the velocity. Velocity is the change of the coordinate versus the time. But in general relativity, when you have a gravity, time and the coordinate are, have the same footing. So it's a, it's very difficult to define a t as an evolutionary parameter. <coughs> so, what is the strategy? The strategy is that to define another coordinate, we call it chronical or historical time. And we can code the history of the particle past and future in this coordinate. So each time derivative here, for example, in this Hamiltonian, is referred to the chronicle or historical time. The first strategy is that to know that how the particle is moving over this model with this Hamiltonian. So this equation gives you the dynamics of the particle moving over this curved surface. So <coughs> I was interested to know that if I fix it, the potential, so what would be the path of the particle? <coughs> so you needed to 
consider approximation for the for the matrix, I mean you needed to give approximation for the, your geometry. So the model which I studied was a two-dimensional curve model. So this is called a two-dimensional black hole. You know the black hole doesn't exist actually in two dimensions, but you can consider this as a geometry of the horizon of the some type of the black holes. So the this the strategy was that to fix your geometry and you need to fix your potential. <coughs> so what is the potential? One thing is that the geometry can be reduced to the another simple form. Uh, I, I, I don't ask you to be familiar with the equation four. So this is the, just the representation of your geometry in new coordinate. You call it null coordinates. And the equation five also is the definition of these new coordinates. So is you, as you see that if you fix at the function f, f is the function which measure for you the strength of the gravity. So you can find the pair of the coordinate. So the equation six is the equation of the motion for the particle. If you can integrate this equation, you can find the path of the particle near this region of the space with the strong gravity. So we need to consider some assumption for the our geometry. So the geometry is considered as a geometry of the black hole. So we are sitting out of the region of the space, we call it the horizon. And we are trying to integrate the equation of motion. So the question remains is that what is the potential? So which kind of the potential you can choose? You know, you know that in the standard classical and quantum mechanics that any system near the equilibrium point behaves like the harmonic oscillator. So we can take harmonic oscillator as a model for the for the other particles. This is a very general model. Actually, when you consider harmonic oscillator, it, it seems that you consider any system near the equilibrium point. So <coughs> I try to integrate the equation of motion like I try to integrate the Newton law, actually, and find the path. <coughs> so you needed a some geometrical quantity to make integrations. So like a gradient of the potential, like you need to know that what is the connections. Connections, the equation 30 and the equation 14 are the, the relation which gives you the information about your space is flat or not flat. So you see that this, this connection can be calculated. And we calculated that, I want to tell you that Finally, we are able to reduce the system of the equation just to a single equation given in the 16. So the equation 16 <coughs> gives you the path of the particle. So, and we can integrate this equation and define the path of the particle in this space time. Can I see that slide before? <coughs> yes. So GBD is the, the metric here, right? Yes, G, yeah, G is the... The original metric and to make life easier we need to pass to the conformal matrix so we define the conformal matrix and the by conformal matrix the gamma Christopher symbol becomes simpler so this is the geometrical part actually uh, so equation 14 is the conformal uh, yeah com is the uh, yeah it is the conformal transformation of the original geometry okay. yes why we do we need that it, 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 uh, it's actually a computational aspect. So we find the, the path of the particle. So it seems that we just integrate the question. <coughs> but this solution can be used. Actually, I didn't mention that here. Uh, this solution can be used to build uh, effective theory <coughs> and uh, to explain the some early, early, very early time, pre early inflation times. Also, it can be used to consider the causal structure of the space-time and early universe. So, that was the classical solution. So now I am going to consider the, the problem of quantum mechanics, simple harmonic oscillator near the region of the space when you have a strong gravity. So as I told you, 
the four coordinates on the space time, which we call it x mu, the t, x, y, z, they are considered as a parameter, and we needed to define a new time to track the, the past or track the history of the particle over this curved surface. So this is the stuckelberg horowitz schrodinger equations, wave equations, four names actually. This is a generalization of the Schrodinger equations for the curve of space-time. And this is a general covariance. So it's, it respected the Lorentz symmetry and it respected also the general covariance. So this is, it looks like the equation which made the quantum mechanics over the curve background. Quantum mechanics, not quantum field theory. Quantum mechanics. So like any other Schrodinger equation, you need to have uh, to build the Hilbert space so you need a pair of the function, and you need to define the uh, scalar product of the two functions. So the question, so it, it was shown that this equation uh, defined uh, a positive norm for the wave vectors. So the norm here, according to equation 18, you can show that the norm of the function are positive always. So this is a real normal Hilbert space like any other problems. So, in previous slide, I presented to you that what was my curve space model. What I did it is just, I expanded this stuckel back schrodinger horwitz spiral wave equations in the null coordinate, and I tried to solve the equations. So, we need to define a new coordinate. So if you define new coordinate, you can find a single variable differential equations given in equation 21. And this equation can be solved and to find the wave function. You need to specify also your <coughs> boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions are that the wave function should satisfy, should be asymptotically. It should have started from the zero amplitude and end to the zero amplitude. And do you know, it's, it looks like that you are starting from the Big Bang, early universe, and you are going to the some type of the singularity in the future. So this scenario looks like, if you want to think about the cosmology of that, it, it supported the early universe, and it's, but it, it, it gives you the idea that future you will have some type of singularity. You know, nobody knows about the future of the cosmos. So there are some scenarios that the universe will end to the some kind of the singular. It may mean everything will be collapsed and finally everything will be disappear. So this wave function as a quantum wave function supported this idea. So this equation is not easy to solve actually and you are not able actually to solve this equation analytically because we are working in exact science so we don't use the numerical methods. We try to estimate the energy level of the particle in such models, so the equation 23 gives you the eigenvalue and gives you the energy level for that particle. Still you can continue and define some asymptotic solutions. So these asymptotic solutions gives you the wave function of the, your model at the early and the late time. So, and you can use the asymptotic Poincaré method and find the total solution. Uh, so, if you can combine, if you have a completeness, if you have the, the condition for completeness, if you have the orthogon normality, so you are, have, you are able to use the superposition principle, and you can build the wave function, the total wave function is written like that. So this is actually the Fourier, this is the Fourier transcendental actually series. So here you have a Fourier amplitude, I define it by C, CPN. So if you want to find CPN, you need to specify your type of the orthogonal normalizations. I mean, you need to know that what is the exact value of the normalization for your eigenbasis function in your Hilbert space. So an interesting case is that you can estimate the grand step wave function in the distal. So the, the grand state wave functions needed to specify the large momentum. You needed to have the cutoff for your momentum. So uh, the important thing is that when you use this model, Stuckelberg, Horwitz, Pyron, Schrodinger, 
quantum mechanics and the curved space time, the ground state will be depend to the large mo depend to the cutoff of the momentum. So as a particle physicist, I think it will be very interesting. It means that the ground state is, uh, has the maximum uh, momentum by some unusual way. So it will be some atypical ground state. So it looks like the Bose-Einstein condensation again. You have at the lowest energy level, but you have a lot of particles. Just they wanted to sit in the ground state. So it's very atypical form. So this is just the estimation of the amplitude of the transitions to the ground state. So, and this quantum mechanical amplitude can be used, as I told you, to, uh, to, to make estimation about the amplitude of excitations. So, in summary, what I did it, it, it was that I considered a curved background when the gravity is so strong near the horizon of the black hole. And I considered any system near this horizon which is kept at the equilibrium. So the, the potential which is responsible to keeping the system in equilibrium is the harmonic oscillator. And I tried to find the classical and quantum trajectory for the system near the horizon. Do you know what will be the first application of these calculations, which I am still working on that, is will be a derivation of the Hawking radiations. Because Hawking radiation is the pair grip production near the horizons, but still you know that there is no proof for that. There is no any quantum mechanical proof. Because in one side you have a gravity, and then you are trying to find the density of the particle and spectrum of the particle. So you needed to use the scattering theory if you want to use the quantum mechanics. So, and by normal way you cannot. The, what we have about the spectrum of the particle near the horizon is just uh, estimation, you know? So, and I want to mention here that the ground state energy for this system can be defined by the variational method. So if you make the minimization of the spatial type of the functions of the energy, you can find the uh, energy. So actually, I did it this calculation. So by a trivial functions, by choosing a very, very good uh, trivial functions as a wave function, you can estimate the ground state energy. So this is the ground state energy. So it's very uh, complicated form of the ground state energy. And uh, because here appear the uh, several uh, mathematical constants, like harmony constant and distance. So, and uh, finally, I was trying to include the a charge or include the electromagnetic U1 field to my theories. So I was thinking that how we can have the dynamics of the charged particle near the horizon of the black holes. So the equation 35 is a generalization of the Stuckelberg, Scholdinger, Horwitz, Pyron wave equation for quantum mechanics on the curved background. So this is the question. This equation still is. Uh, Lorentz invariant and it still preserve the general covariance. So this is a good quantum mechanic over the curve background. And tau is the chronicle or historical time parameter. So by the tau you can, as I told you, by the tau you can track and you can uh, uh, actually recall the history of the particle by the tau. And the x mu is the coordinate over the manifold. So by the simple assumption about the gauge field about the electromagnetic a scalar and vector potential, so you are able to solve this equation. So I removed a lot of detail, but uh, I will show you the references. So by the separation of variables, you are able to find the wave vectors. So, and you are able to also identify the eigenvalue for the particles. So, the as I told you, a direct application of this exact result is that you can find the probability of near